In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use Fourier analysis to quickly determine the dominant cycle. And you can do this for any time frame, but in the example, we're going to use daily data uh, and the SPY. And we get the data from the built-in updater, and we downloaded five years of Yahoo EOD data. And as you can see, that produces about 1,185 records, uh, which is just about the ideal amount for doing Fourier analysis. If for some reason you had trouble downloading the Yahoo data, you can use the quote media EOD uh, segment of the downloader, and that downloads 732 uh, records uh, that can't be changed, but 732 works pretty good for doing Fourier analysis also. And the way you use Fourier analysis is that you click on the Hearst method in the analysis chart, and that produces the Fourier uh, menu, and it pops up this Fourier window. You download the data that you want, and again, either the Yahoo EOD five years or the quote media and it just takes a couple seconds and this is uh, the window that it pops up and the top uh, inner window here is the data that's being analyzed in this case it's spy daily data and the bottom window is the digital bandpass filter window and this shows the results of the analysis and uh, how to pick out cycles. It's a little difficult to read uh, at this level, but you can use the mouse. Uh, you hold down the left, left mouse button and just form a rectangle of the area that you want to see. And you can then zoom in on the digital bandpass filter window. And the way you determine the cycles is you look for the bumps and the blue line. And that gives you the cycles. And we like to use now nah, usually somewhere around 100 data points, 120 data points for uh, a longer term analysis. And you can see that we got a bump uh, right where the cursor is located. And you can read the cursor position from the bottom of the uh, window, or you can just eyeball it down here at this uh, horizontal axis, also gives you the cyclical periods. And we actually got 111 uh, days as the dominant cycle. Just the mouse cursor shifted a little bit when I took the screenshot. But now you know, say in this case, 111 days is a dominant, dominant uh, cycle period for the SPY daily data. So we want to go from here, close this window, and we hop over to the Hearst method and we do a displace moving average of 111 periods. And this is the chart that came up. And the next thing we do is I use, I like to use my, my favorite method, uh, Hearst method, is the three click method. And this is a demonstration of how it worked uh, historically. And what you do is you look for the, uh, an intersection of all three moving averages, in this case, the blue, the green, and the red and you click once there. Then follow the green line back to the next uh, incident of intersection of the three moving averages. Uh, you click there. That's the second click. And now, because we're going to be projecting a high, you look for the lowest data point as close to the middle of your first two clicks as you can get. And this is the projection that we got from uh, one click, two clicks, three clicks. And you can see that in this historical example, it worked out pretty good and gave us the high of 184.81 on December 26th. And I think that was pretty darn close to, uh, to spot on. Uh, this is the real-time projection that we did with the data that we just uh, loaded this morning. And this was our first click. We don't have an intersection of all three moving averages, or in this case, uh, the projected moving averages. So we clicked once on the blue-green intersection, uh, moved, followed the green line back to the next blue-green intersection, and then the low point uh, 
the index intermediate low point, and it gave us a projection of about 201.27 on March 28th of this year. So basically, what we've done using the Fourier analysis and the Hearst method is we've gone from zero information to a pretty exact price and time projection uh, in a couple minutes with a few mouse clicks. So now we have a solid and reliable basis to plan our trades uh, for the next few weeks. Now, do they always work out? No, but they usually do. And here's the reason why, is that you can see the gap here, that we left a big gap in the, in the blue lines, but there's also a similar gap in the red lines and the green lines. And the gaps show where the actual data ends and the projection begins. And what we do is we use a regression analysis and the last two data points of the actual data uh, to project where a future intersection will take place. And you can see that if you can successfully project where the intersections will occur, as we demonstrated in this historical example, you get pretty darn accurate results uh, going forward. Now, because we only use the last two data points, the data can and does shift up and down. So, you know, you're not going to bet your life that it's going to be 201.27 on March 28th, but it's certainly uh, reliable enough to plan uh, going forward. Now, we use daily data for this example. But you can do exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same process uh, with any time frame. And by using the built-in updater, uh, you get you know, free unlimited intraday data downloads very near real time uh, all during the trading day, which you can then convert into any time period from 15 minutes to 260 minutes. Uh, you know, as often as you want, and it just takes a couple seconds to do any of it. So if you trade primarily in the 65-minute time period or the 130-minute time period, uh, which are one-sixth and one-third of the trading day, respectively, and the Fourier analysis and the Hearth method, you know, you can pretty much stay grounded as to what to expect uh, in whatever time frame you're trading and then you of course can change accordingly as as situations change okay so this is the Fourier analysis determining the dominant cycle and how to quickly use that information uh, to get pretty accurate price and time projections using the Hearst method uh, I hope you found this useful